Well, let me introduce you to the XVS 650 Bobber Wannabe. It's another un unfinished project that I've got. Um, and I'm on a bit of a bit of a mission to get the place tidied up and finish all the things I've started. So, um, this is a 650, slightly different, bolt on. Uh, we don't have to actually cut anything off the back. And it's a classic, so it's got the fully cloaked front forks and the fat front wheel. So it should look pretty good on footboards rather than pegs. Um, it's got an AIS system here. With a pump. Which I think I'll get rid of. I'll have a look at that. It's super ugly. So we'll see. But um, it's not done many miles. But it's, you know, a few years old. So let's get started on this. See if we can have some fun. So sorry about putting it on the um, on the ramp or the lift. It's an easy rise, a big blue lift. Just slides under the bike. And uh, I think here I found that it wasn't quite sitting right. So needed some little blocks to lift the, 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 the bars onto the chassis rails. And then um, didn't bolt it down, but tie wrapped it down on all four corners and cleaned up a little bit around there. Started by removing the air filter and then the AIS pipes. The AIS pipes have a little pump on the other side. There it is. And they pump air into the exhaust uh, manifolds, really, and reduce the volume of, well, make cleaner, cleaner emissions. So tank came off. I was a bit concerned that um, one of the pipes running the AIS, I uh, didn't know where it was, so I ended up taking the plenum chamber off, which is a bit of a mistake. Didn't need to do that. Really having a good look around, see how it all rooted. So the plenum chamber came off, and I uh, could see exactly what the vacuum pipe that comes out that, that powers the AIS. I'd had the battery on charge, but it wasn't doing anything at all, so I decided to put a new one in. So you start by removing that fuse box at the top there, taking the two terminals out, putting the screws back in just so I don't lose them. So I've got a battery on order, and we've uh, found the object in the tank and removed that. Now I've laid out a table of all the parts that we've got. Um, it's one heck of a jigsaw. Let's start working out what they are. We've got mirrors, we've got bars, we've got risers. In fact, there's another set of risers. Here's the other set of risers. They're the brackets for the rear mud guard, seat bracket, mud guard bracket, headlamp bowl, indicators, rear number plate light, foot pegs, foot, foot boards actually. Brackets to mount them on, rear light, bag for something I don't know what's inside. So I've had this project ongoing for a while and now I've got a big jigsaw to put together. Let's see how we get on. So we'll start with spark plugs, set to 33 thou. So I was taking the old spark plugs out. I always like to put new plugs in. Um, especially with a bike that's sat around for a while, you want to make it easier to start when you do get it back together so you don't create any problems and make life more difficult for yourself. And they're quite tricky because there are a lot of fins on those engines and the plug is very deep down inside. Giving it a bit of a clean round with some WD. Good way of bringing up the paintwork and uh, getting, getting grease off actually and you just leave a little film of oil on Makes, now this is putting that plenum chamber back on. That was very tricky. It's two two sort of rubber cups that go over the inlet manifold to the um, carbs. Really took a long time to get that sorted. Then I started on the you know, swing arm. There was a bolt between the shock absorber and the top of the swing arm, and I really couldn't shift it. it was trying different things, give it some pressure. Uh, tried spinning it with an air ratchet. was really giving me some grief. So in the end I took the 
top bolt that the shock absorber out and drop the arm down so that I could give it a good whack. So this is the final part of disconnecting the AIS system. It's been and bought this fitting, which is a 12mm brass end cap. It has a little olive inside it. You might be able to see that. And that slips straight over this pipe here. Then we use a 17mm and a 19mm spanner to tighten it up. Make sure it's seated right down. Now this is the problem. Mm, I can't get on it. I wonder if I can get in there with this flex. Sorry. Get it tight and then one time funnel tighten. And that's good. So I can get the get the socket out, I've got it. So can you see that? And there's the cap off the uh, AI system on the rear cylinder. So there it is, that's how you cap off the AI system. There is one other capping off to do which is the, the power supply to the, to, the, uh, to the AIS, which is a rubber hose, which is this hose here. So it's a vacuum hose, comes off the side of the manifold. What I'm gonna do is plug that with a bolt. So let's get it off first. I'll get some needle hose pliers. So get in there with the needle and those pliers and just pull that clip off. Then I've got to get a rubber hose off, but it's sort of seized on. Proving rather tricky. I think I have to cut it in the end. Just trying to ease it off. There's two, the, the two tubes actually you use for balancing the carbs. So there's one on each carb one either side, this is really stuck on. It sort of sees on, the rubber sticks. Gonna have to use a knife I think to cut it off. I'm shortening it anyway, so it doesn't make too much of a problem. You can probably see that, these two are the balancing points for balancing the carbs, but that one is used to power the AIS with a vacuum. So there was a feed pipe going off there and what we need to do is blank it off in the same manner this one's been blanked off. But we'll use a little bit of the hose, rather than buy one of these blanks, we'll use a little bit of the hose that came off. This is the hose that powered the AIS. Now I've had to cut it to um, get it off, so we'll just tidy that end up. But we'll use this end. That's the end that went onto the IS pipe. I've got a battery bolt here. Now we need about that much to go over the nipple on the uh, intake manifold plus that much for the for the bolt. So we'll just cut that. Tougher than you think. Really tough. Hasn't touched it. We'll use a knife. We'll wind that bolt in there. We'll screw it in. Just making a blanking plug. There, I've screwed that in, just held it in the vise. Now that is a good fit. But what we'll do is we'll put one of these clamps on just to make it belt and braces.
And we'll put another one on to go over the nipple on the carburetor in the intake manifold. We'll load that up there, and put it onto the inlet manifold, and then slide it down. So that's what's got to go there. You see that? You see it's going on there? So what I'm going to do, just put a little bit of grease around it. Slide it on more easily. God, that's gone on very easily now. So just using the needle nose pliers to get that that fast that clip over just to hold that pipe on. It's a vacuum pipe, so it's been sucked on. It's quite tricky because it's working between the two cylinders. You've got to get those clips parallel if they're going to move. Give it a try by hand. So keep it nice and parallel in it. I think it's just going to get it. Because that pipe's ribbed and it sort of produces a little bump. Oh, it's on. There we are, perfect. So we've blocked off the power supply to the AIS and here just there we've capped off where the air goes into the exhaust manifold so that's it AIS disconnected now I started moving on to the foot controls and I had some powder coating on the bush for the brake pedal and the gear lever it makes them seize in their in their brackets. As you can see I was scratching it off with a knife here. An absolute must this because if, if you get a little bit of um, powder coat in the in the bush, they never really feel right. They feel a bit sticky. Just shaving it down. Working my way around. Ideally, I should have taped it off before it went to the powder coaters, but the powder coating is a heat process where they heat the thing up and it, sometimes you can't get the tape off, it's so just as bad. So, same treatment for the gear shift. Oh no, sorry, I was rubbing it with a bit of Scotch Bright. Just getting it all cleaned up and then grease it up and put it together. So rebuilding the foot pegs, oh, there's another issue there where the thread had some powder coat in so just tapped it out. These are tricky little monkeys, these screws, these uh, springs. Very awkward to get in, it took a long time fiddling about trying it different ways and working out actually how it all went back together. So having completed the brake side, I went and moved on to the um, gear shift. It's a bit out of shot there, I'm afraid, sorry. Interestingly, the rubbers that you put on the gear shift really benefit from being heated up. So if you get a little mug of boiling water, drop them in, let them warm up, and you can squeeze them over. So there's the gear shift with the rubbers on, look. Lining up the uh, sort of threaded bar that acts as the gear shift and adjusting it up so it's in the right place. Personally, I never really use a heel shift, just the toe. Some of the bikes I've got have just got the toe shift. There's the Avon grips, look, they're lovely. Now, I fitted these rather nice Avon grips. That throttle isn't snapping back, which is very dangerous. So we'll find out why. It's either it's sticking on there or it's sticking in here. 
but the only two places it can stick. So we'll just take it apart, have a look. Well, I don't think it's sticking on there, I think it's... I think it's sticking in the actual casing. Let's have a look. I'm just relaxing the tension on the cables here, but just opening up those adjusters. I was struggling really to get the reason why it was sticky. So I put some, uh, in the end I put some oil down the cables, just to make sure they were nice and lubricated. Something is binding in there. Well, we'll have to have a see. Yep, I think we'll have to have another look at it. I was running out of time that day. So I moved on to the uh, indicators, take off the indicator bar, and that bottom yoke looked a bit, uh, a bit rusty really and horrible. So stripped it right back, the whole of the head like bracket was off, and uh, got a bit of brake cleaner in there, get any grease or oil that was on it off. Took my time and cleaned up the wiring as well, because I like those nice and clean. So uh, Scott's brighted it over, and then uh, I think you'll find a mask up. Here we are, masking up. Really makes the bike look fresh when your bottom yoke is painted up. So, just tie wrapping things out of the way. Yeah, I've just hit it with a bit of primer there, let that go off when I fiddle with something else. So just cleaning up the um, area around the brake switch and then moving on to the exhaust. One of the nuts was very tight so needed a bit of heat on it. Just slip off the two big pipes and take the uh, rear what do you call it, down pipe off, that's attached to the bottom pipe. They went on really nice. I forget what brand they are, but I'll mention it in a later video. So I'd uh, tried them on, got them, made sure they fitted right, and then uh, clean up all those areas that you can't get to when the, you've got the pipes back on. So the cleaning process of the bike really is an ongoing thing throughout the whole build. Because as you take parts off, you can get to bits that you can't reach. And uh, it really makes a big difference. So it's worthwhile investing a bit of time. I think I painted the uh, rear arm that supports the... There we are, look. So just rubbed it down. Oh, a bit of an opportunity. That was the primer going on the fork yoke. And uh, there's the brake pedal and right hand side foot plate going on. A little bit tricky those things. Yeah, so time for a second coat, a bit of gloss black on that. So just pulled out that um, exhaust manifold gasket, put a new one in and the rear support went back on. I think I was cleaning up the bolts. The bolts on those uh, exhaust manifolds get a bit rusty. So get them on the wire wheel, get the threads all clean, and it goes together much better. I think you can see I've put some silver on that yoke. Looks like a new part. Really pleased with that. So I put the headlight bracket back on, and I've got a powder coated headlight bowl. So it was chrome, but Looked a bit tired, and I quite like the stealthy look of a black headlamp bowl. And there's the an indicator bar. I 
Oh, that's the uh, seat bracket, the front mount of the seat bracket going on, and then the rear mount's going on. I certainly cover some ground, don't I? So this is the fitting of the indicators on oh, the rear light, the heat shrink that I'd like to put on over that. And uh, cover the whole of the, th oh, just extending the wires. Route that round. Resold all the bullet connectors on the front there. All goes back together. Looks good, doesn't it? I love those nickel chrome uh, indicators. I think that screw is giving me some trouble. So there it is. Not finished yet. Got the tank to go on front fender, rear fender, and seat. But I think I'm going to. Uh, Oh, this is that bolt for the rear shock absorber. And it carries the, the reason you have to take the rear shock absorber off is it carries the mount to the, see it there, just by the tire, the mount for the rear fender. So we've got the seat lined up and ready to go on. Now this is um, the black casings on the engine were a bit milky bit powdery so I'm getting some scotch bright and uh, just spending quite a lot of time working on them neatening them up getting in there with a screwdriver it's quite fiddly and then I had some uh, matte black engine paint which I'm going to paint them with does take a lot of time to get in there, all those nooks and crannies. As you can see, the coverage isn't brilliant with this stuff, so I think I'm going to give it two coats. So I've covered quite a lot of the build in this video, and I'm going to leave it at this and wrap it up on this one. And um, I'll do a Bobber 650 Bobber Part 2 uh, video when I've finished the bike and done the rest of it so you can see what went on to complete this project. I hope you enjoy these videos. They're just for fun, videoing what I'm doing and uh, I enjoy it and I hope you do too. So uh, like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing and you're enjoying the videos and keep watching and I'll catch you next time.